Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today, I'm going to show you how I archive footage for long-term storage. If you want to skip straight into the tutorial, there'll be a timestamp right here. Otherwise, I'll explain my process for, you know, archiving footage properly and also my, you know, how I do it, right? So when I'm working on a project, I always make two copies. Ideally, you would want to make three, but I only make two. Uh, this is my long-term storage hard drive. This is eight terabytes. It's pretty slow for reading and writing. That's why I don't ever edit off of this. It's just for storage. And I have my editing hard drive. It's not an SSD, but if you can try to get a, a solid state drive, they're much faster at editing. But this Lazier is pretty fast and it does the trick for me. It only has 500 gigabytes, but it's much faster at reading and writing. That's why I use it for my editing, right? So when I bring in my SD card into my computer, I always bring in the, the footage first into this one. I create folders, I name the footage. Once I'm happy with the folder structure and the naming, I bring it in to my long-term storage. I back it up here. I want the folder structure to be the same. That's very important. The next step I take is to create a new library using Final Cut Pro X to start editing my project on this hard drive. Now, as you're editing, Final Cut Pro X is gonna create, uh, is gonna generate files, it's gonna create proxy media probably, it's gonna render out different files and the library starts getting exponentially bigger. Now, once you're done with the video project, you've exported the final video, or maybe you've done a couple of different versions and you're no longer touching it, you wanna get it out of this hard drive because it's only 500 gigabytes and it fills up very fast. And also what I'm doing is I'm bringing in new projects to edit off of this one. So I wanna get rid of the old projects that I'm no longer having to use. And there's a process to do that and I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So what I do is I delete the generated files and the rendered files and I transfer the project files and the library over to the storage drive for long-term storage. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how to do that. Here we are in my desktop. This is my Lazier hard drive. You can see these are projects that I'm currently working on. Um, for this one, I already finished a couple of these. And if we look at the available storage on my Lazier, actually you can right click here, and get info. Uh, it says here I have 94 gigabytes of free space. So I need to clear up some space because this only holds 500 gigs. Uh, so let's pick this one, this overhead boom mic. It's been a while since I finished it. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to revisit this project. If we look at the size of the library, it says here it's 70 gigabytes. That's already telling me there's some rendered files in here that's, that, that's building up the size of this library. If we go to uh, right click, show package contents, this event right here, original media, there's some files that were generated, rendered files in here. There's a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, let's go back. Um, okay, there it is. Open up the eight terabyte uh, folders, and this is my. This is actually a YouTube video I created recently. So here it is. Uh, you can see the file structure is the same. There's an audio B-roll and the talking portion. There's no library in here because I don't transfer it until I'm done, and I've cleared up the rendered files. So to do that, you open up the library on your editing drive and from here is very simple just select the library go to file delete generated library files select that i like to delete all rendered files delete optim optimized media and also the proxy media in case you created that hit ok and now you just close the library and now if we look at the library again the size went down to 148.7 megabytes. So we're already saving like 70 gigabytes of space just by doing that one step. If we didn't do that, our storage drive would be taking up more space than it needs to. So now we can just drag over the library over to our storage drive. Now that it's backed up here to our storage drive, we can go ahead and delete this folder. And if we take a look at that, that that's, 11.71 gigs. It used to be about 80 gigs before I deleted all the render files I was sitting inside of the library. So, you know, we can go ahead and delete this. And now if we ever need to revisit this project and make some edits and or do another, you know, revisions or whatever we need to, we can always do that um, without taking so much space in our storage drive. 
And here's another final tip for you. Let's say I'm working on another project right now. Let's say I was working on this How I Color Grade video. Actually, I already released it. It's There'll be a card if you want to check it out, How I Color Grade. Uh, let's say I haven't backed up the library yet and I'm worried about the possibility that my hard drive might crash and I might lose all the edits I've we've been working on. I often export an XML file in order to back you know, back up my edits. Uh, that's if I haven't backed up the library yet to my storage drive, which I usually don't if, if it's a small project, but on bigger projects, I'm really worried. So I always make sure to export an XML. So th this is how it works. Uh, let's find the footage here. This is my eight terabyte, um, how I color grade. You see there's no library here. So what I do is I open up this library from my editing hard drive, my Lazier. I'm going to create an XML file of that project. Let's see um, how I color grade. Right. And so I select that project file. I said file export XML. And I usually export either to my Google Drive. Uh, that way it can be backed up online or to my storage drive. Uh, in this case, we're going to save it to my storage drive. Say YouTube, how I color grade. We're going to save it here, the XML. Now, if we close Final Cut Pro X, we go and double click on the XML file I put here on the 8 terabyte hard drive with all the same folder structure. That's very important. Click, double click on it. It's going to rebuild my project. We can say a new one. We're going to create a new library. Again, we're going to make sure that the library sits in the same folder. We're going to name it how I color grade and hit save. Same folder. You see there it created the library inside this folder. It's going to rebuild my whole edits, all the everything that I've done. So that's the importance of creating XML files. So there it opens up my project. There it is just how it was before and all my edits and my color grade and all the cuts I've done are not lost because I created that XML file. I was able to rebuild the whole library and the project files. So that's something you might wanna take advantage of. All right, this does it for today's video. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. Also, if you have any suggestions for future Final Cut Pro X tutorials, if you're wondering about anything, please ask away down below. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.